You've been dieting for months. You spend hours at the gym five times a week and run mornings and evenings. But stubborn fat isn't going anywhere. If that's the case, you might be doing one of the common workout mistakes. They can stop your progress or even worse, set you back. Number 11. You skip warm-ups. You arrive at the gym all pumped up and get on the treadmill or go heavy weightlifting. Unfortunately, if you don't warm up, you risk injuring your body. Your muscles and connective tissue are somewhat like a rubber band. If you pull a rubber band when it's too cold, it can snap. But if you heat up that rubber, it gets elastic and flexible. A good warm-up prepares your muscles, heart and lungs for physical activity. It raises your muscle temperature and improves circulation. It's good for your range of motion, speed, strength and endurance. Stretching after the workout is also super important. If you don't do it, you'll leave your muscles in a state of contraction and tension. Instead of feeling relaxed after exercising, you'll feel restricted. A huge part of weight loss is the mental aspect. If your body doesn't feel good, you won't want to get back to the gym and give it your all. Number 10. You don't have a game plan. You gotta know what you want and plan how to get there before you arrive at the gym. You can do your research or consult a personal trainer to build a program for you. Set aside time for workouts in your daily planner like you do with doctor's appointments or work meetings. Hoping to fit it in somewhere at some points normally ends in missed workouts. Three 30-minute sessions a week should be enough for starters. Number 9. You only do steady cardio. Cardio is a great way to lose weight. It can also improve your memory and thinking ability, and it helps to control blood sugar, reduce anxiety, and gives you better sleep. Doing only steady cardio like spending hours on the treadmill and using the elliptical with the same intensity can help you if you're getting ready for a marathon. It will give you stamina, but if your goal is weight loss, do some high-intensity interval training workouts, or HIT. They involve going as fast as your body will allow you to for one to three minutes, and then slowing down for the same amount of time. First, you'd slow down to a walk and then, as you get more advanced, to a jog. These steps of workouts have an afterburn effect, which you don't get with steady cardio. HIT increases metabolism for 24 hours after exercise, better than jogging and weight training. It also reduces blood sugar levels, resting heart rate, and blood pressure. Here's one HIT workout idea. Do 45 reps of mountain climbers, then do 20 to 30 push-ups. Stay in the plank position for one minute. Finish it with the jumping rope for one minute. Complete the whole set four times with a one minute break after jumping rope. Eight, you underestimate the importance of strength training. If you stick to cardio alone, you are ignoring a lot of your muscles that also need your attention. At some point, you'll adapt to cardio and your weight loss will stop right there. That's why you must add strength training to your routine. It won't make you too buff like many people think. Strength training will help you gain lean muscle in your body. It will also speed up your metabolism and help you burn fat. The more muscle you have, the more energy your body will expend. It means your body will burn more calories while you're doing everyday things like chilling in your house or even sleeping. Number 7. Your routine includes too many single joint exercises. Single joint exercises like dumbbell curls and single arm cable extensions focus on smaller muscle groups like biceps and triceps. They're effective, but not efficient enough. For better results, include multi-joint exercises like dumbbell chest presses or barbell rows and squats in your routine. If you want to focus on one muscle group, start with multi-joint exercises and then focus on it with single joint moves. Number 6. You misunderstand soreness. Even the most experienced athletes can get sore from time to time. It's a natural part of exercising, and it doesn't just happen when you're trying out a new routine. The official term for it is delayed onset muscle soreness, and it occurs 24 to 48 hours after the workout. When you overtrain and push through your soreness, you don't give your body enough time to heal and recover. The result is fitness burnout and injuries. Remember that your muscles grow during these rest days too. If you wake up and you can't get out of bed, then you clearly need a rest day or a few days. Instead of pushing your body too much all at once, ease into the exercise you're trying to accomplish. Focus only on light exercise like walking. If you're stubborn and keep going hardcore, you're just tiring the muscle and setting yourself back even further. So schedule rest and recover days and split your workouts. Train certain muscle groups on certain days and give them rest on the remaining days. If Monday and Thursday are your chest, quads and shoulder days, Tuesdays and Fridays could be your pull muscle days. Saturday can be cardio day and Wednesday and Sunday your rest days. Number 5. Your idea of correct form is incorrect. The way you lift heavy weights is crucial for success. It makes your workouts more effective and safe. It's okay to consult a professional to be sure how to do things properly. Even the slightest correction can make a huge difference. Cheating and doing more reps with the lightest weight won't take you far. The ideal range is 8 to 12 reps. When you know how to do it right, you'll be able to complete a full range of motion with each movement. 
increase the weight, and reach your goals faster. Number 4. You use light weights to tone up. Depending on your goals, you can benefit more from either more reps with lighter weights or fewer reps with heavier weights. If you're trying to tone up your body and grow some muscle, heavier weights with less reps is the way to go. Light weights can help you build endurance, and you need it for endurance sports like cross-country skiing and rowing. You could do 20 reps with light weights, but doing even 5 reps with heavier weights will help your muscles look sculpted and toned. Heavier weights and short reps will also help if you want to lose some weight. This works like HIIT workouts. Heavier weights will help you maintain your muscle mass while losing fat. If you decide to try it, test your body to see how much weight you can safely and comfortably lift before engaging in a hardcore workout. Number 3. You stick to the same routine. You won't reach your weight loss goals if you focus solely on strength training or cardio. First, your body will adapt to the exercise and when things get too easy, progress stops. During your first day at the gym, 30 minutes on the treadmill probably seemed impossible, and soon enough, it becomes a walk in the park. Second, you're more likely to get bored and quit your routine if you keep doing it over and over. You gain some stamina from the same routine, but you must change things up regularly to give yourself a new challenge. A good exercise routine for weight loss and toning up involves cardio, strength training, and flexibility exercises, including warming up and stretching. So mix it up, and you'll see how it can help you stay much more motivated and make progress. Number 2. You skip supplements. Eating properly and healthy will help you get fit and bulk up. A post-workout shake can speed up that process. You need supplements and amino acids like creatine and glycogen to get more lean mass faster. Don't go crazy with energy drinks and energy bars, though. They are packed with sugar and calories and can reverse the benefits of your exercise. Number 1. You don't track your progress. Professional bodybuilders always track their progress to adapt their routine. Follow their example and write down how much weight you're lifting, how many reps you've done, and how much rest you've had between the reps, and what worked for you. This way you can analyze what you're doing right, what mistakes you make, and how to speed up the progress. Psychologists confirm you're more likely to achieve your goal when you monitor your progress, and it works best when you physically record it. It doesn't matter if it's an app or a paper log, it all works.